We are tracking developments as Hurricane Harvey has slammed southeastern Texas. So when you look at the storm as it sits right now hanging over Texas, what concerns you most about Harvey? Several things. First of all, if it lingers over the land, it could cause massive flooding. And then watch out. If it goes back into the Gulf, it could get re-energized and create a second, even a third landfall. And so the agony has just begun with this hurricane of the decade. We have been praying for quite a while now. The odd of half the river, so we could get some kind of break through here with these absolutely unrelenting winds. Video inside the eye wall of Hurricane Harvey shows the power of a Category 4 as it barreled into the Gulf Coast last night. Several areas look like disaster zones. Wind gusts of over 160 miles per hour and flooding rains slam towns along the water. It's not expected to let up for days. Rockport and Fulton were some of the city's hardest hit. They are the first populated areas to see a direct impact. Early views of the damage show several mobile homes flipped or already in pieces. A gas station sign lies flat on the ground after it was toppled. People staying at this hotel had to be evacuated to a nearby school. Debris everywhere, roof totally gone, rooms exposed. Harvey is no joke. As you enter the bedrooms of the hotel, you see the outer walls and windows are gone. Parts of this area high school were left unrecognizable after it was demolished by the destructive winds. Just to the south of Rockport in Aransas Pass, the police department posted this video showing the walls of their building blown off. This reporter in Corpus Christi was nearly lifted off the ground as the winds picked him up during Harvey's landfall. This storm is the first Category 4 hurricane to hit the Texas Gulf Coast since Hurricane Carla, which came ashore not too far from here. 56 years ago. We're seeing images of damage from Harvey already uh, coming in, but we're really far from knowing the full extent of how catastrophic and costly it will be. CoreLogic, though, is estimating the potential price tag for damage to be at least $40 billion in reconstruction costs, with more than 200,000 homes at risk of storm surge, surge damage in Texas alone. The figure doesn't account for storm surges as far north as Morgan City, Louisiana. That's some 400 miles away from Harvey's landfall. Damage is still being assessed this morning from Harvey. Late last night, President Trump tweeted that he signed a disaster proclamation freeing up federal assistance for the state of Texas. David Begno is a short distance from Rockport where the storm made landfall. David, good morning. We're on the road to Rockport, Texas, but we've tried for the last two hours to get there and there are power lines on the roadway. There's storm surge that's pushing water onto the roadway and we're having a really hard time getting there. In fact, we followed, we tried to follow emergency crews into the area, but they were having to dodge all kinds of debris in the roadway. There is a pretty significant flooding on the side of the roadway in ditches. As we went through the town of Taft, there is heavy destruction, but no cell phone reception. So the only area where we were going to be able to, to broadcast was here. We literally pulled over on the side of the road. Rockport, by the way, is where the roof of a senior housing complex collapsed last night. And initially, rescue crews said, we can't even get to those people who are trapped. Uh, what's it like out there right now? It's been awfully windy. Last hour, you could barely speak to us. Yeah, that's right, Alex. And right now it's still windy. And more than that, it's raining, raining still harder than we've seen since we've been here the last few days. And that's the biggest concern right now. There's a flash flood warning here. It was just extended for a couple hours. Odds are good. We're going to see a lot of flash flood warnings in the coming days here in Galveston all along. The concern wasn't really the hurricane force winds or the storm surge. They knew that wouldn't be as bad here. The concern is what we're seeing right now. The system basically sitting over us and just dumping rain, not just for hours, but for days. That flash flood warning isn't just here along the coast. It goes well inland to Houston and beyond that. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people who live here in Galveston decided not to evacuate from here because they figured even if they were just going to Houston or San Antonio, those places are going to get a lot of rain. There's the potential for major flooding there, and then they'd be in a place where they don't live or they may not know anyone. That's why a lot of people have decided to stay here in Galveston and take the risk. That way they can keep an eye on their own homes, especially in low-lying areas. People have 
been using sandbags. They've shuttered themselves in. They've stocked up on water and food. They have generators. But if you're in those low-lying areas, you're really going to need to keep an eye out for the weather here because the flash flooding can happen rapidly. And there are some homes that could quickly go underwater. So they want to make sure to keep everyone updated so that doesn't happen. And no one, they figure there's going to be a lot of damage here from the flooding if it's as bad as they're predicting. But they want to make sure that no one is hurt or no one loses their lives here. So that's the number one priority. But it's not going to be like this for a few hours. It's going to be raining this hard for a few days. Now, you're talking to emergency crews and personnel. What are they telling you about what they're seeing on the ground? Well, obviously, there's uh, great devastation where the hurricane hit uh, the area, but also our greatest concern right now uh, is the ongoing flooding uh, that will take place. Uh, that will continue uh, perhaps for days, uh, and that poses ongoing danger. The other thing that we are focused on right now, we are trying to uh, get in as fast as we can uh, to begin the rescue process. Even, even though the storms are still raging, uh, we have teams already working to get in to try to uh, rescue as many people as we can. And, and sir, what, what is your message now uh, to the folks, uh, specifically in Rockport? We just had a report that, uh, and we saw some images from uh, the area that look absolutely devastating, and with the understanding, of course, that it is con going to continue to rain in the area. Right. It's, it's important that uh, people who are in place right now uh, continue to find ways to remain safe, uh, continue to try to communicate uh, as best as they can with their uh, local officials or with anybody that can get uh, messages to either the local or state officials so we can get to them and help rescue them. And we know, sir, that President Trump has uh, allocated federal funds uh, to the state. Uh, have you spoken to the president? I have spoken to the president and his team on several occasions. It was last night that the president granted our, our uh, declaration uh, for disaster. What that means is that uh, FEMA has now been triggered uh, to assist uh, the cities, the counties, and individuals uh, to begin the rebuilding process. Uh, this was a very swift grant from the White House and will mean that Texas will be able to begin the rebuilding process even more quickly. Yeah, in fact, uh, the president has been tweeting uh, pretty much all night. I'm looking at some of the tweets right now. Uh, uh, about 13 hours ago, at the request of the governor of Texas, I have signed the disaster proclamation, which unleashes the full force of government help. Help our viewers understand, sir, what that means, what that looks like, the full force of government help. Sure. What, what that means is uh, with the full force of FEMA assistance, uh, they will be providing assistance to uh, local governments, uh, to local counties, uh, to individuals who have been harmed, uh, uh, like having their uh, home mowed down uh, by this hurricane, uh, help all of them go through the rebuilding process. And what it means is that the money will be getting to them uh, even quicker. Uh, all this will do is speed up uh, the response time of rebuilding the lives and communities been, that have been affected by this hurricane. From Harvey, as it is making landfall here, about 50 miles, as you mentioned, south of where we are, we're here in Port Lavaca. There is Lavaca Bay uh, just in front of me here, and that storm surge from Harvey is pushing water from the bay this way. We're kind of teetering here. We've been very steady, very consistent with 50, 60 mile per hour winds, gust occasionally to hurricane force uh, here in Corpus Christi. And this may be some of our worst weather. Incredible. This is an intense fire. Look on the left side here. These are melted Jeep Wranglers, uh, two of them right there and then a pickup truck in between them. And then you can see, I mean, this was a town home, according to the police chief who we just talked to, the Corpus Christi fire, uh, completely gone. And then over here on the right, you can see this uh, huge, looks like a, either a Chevy or a Dodge Dually, and it's the front of that truck is completely melted as well. So just a horrific fire. And uh, we're not sure exactly how it started. The police chief doesn't know. He's, it could have been a power line down. I mean, it certainly had a lot of fuel, something really uh, amongst all this rain and storm surge. Talk about the last thing you expect to see uh, is just a, a not only a fire, but a very intense fire melting cars out here. Uh, it's just unbelievable. So we came here, we weren't sure exactly what to expect, and all of a sudden we came across all these firefighters. This is actually technically uh, still Corpus Christi. Uh, we are on Padre Island, so we're actually very close to uh, the Gulf right here. And uh, I asked, I was like, was this under mandatory evacuation? Uh, and the chief said, actually, no, this is not. This was still under voluntary evacuation. So these people didn't have to leave, but he says from what they see right now, it appears that there was nobody at this home that they got out of here which is thankful because that uh, is a, a completely devastating fire. We've got four melted cars. There's a boat over there that uh, looks like it might have survived, but it's right up against another um, yeah. quite nice houses out here on Padre Island. This is a...
vacation spot for a lot of people. So uh, yeah. that's the story here as we uh, watch as uh, the rain has really subsided quite a bit. The winds are really coming down. I think you guys were saying, and it's been hard for me to keep up, uh, that it's now a Cat 1 uh, hurricane. And uh, in this area, it's, it's, it's well past at this point. So we're just seeing outer bands. So uh, we'll send it back to you guys. Yeah, Rob, so you're there at this scene. We've been showing this video for, for I think, over the last hour, an hour and a half. This house has been burning there. Are fire crews able to get to this house? Uh, I know they were battling it earlier. Have they, are they more concerned now that this house seems like a total wreck? They're moved on to other things right now. Or do you see firefighters battling this place? Yeah, I mean, I, I think they got it. I think they got it contained the way they want it. And I mean, obviously, this is a complete loss. So I think they're just going to let it kind of fizzle out hmm. uh, and just let the rest of that fuel just burn down to nothing. Uh, there's no point in fighting it at this point. I think they've successfully managed to keep it away from the house right next door. And I think they're just going to let the little raindrops do the rest right. of the job because most of these guys are just chilling in the trucks right behind me here. And I, I think it's 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 going to be a moot point here before long. There's going to be nothing left to burn. Hey, Rob, you mentioned power lines. Obviously, we don't know if that is necessarily the cause of this fire. But in your travels around the area where you're going, have you seen a lot of power lines down? Because it seems at this point when people end up getting back, that is the major concern besides flooding. Yeah. Well, yeah, right, right across the street there were power lines down, which is why I thought that could have been the igniter, because that certainly would make sense to me. I mean, who, who would think that, that cheap Wranglers are going to burn to a crisp uh, in the middle of a hurricane? You know, I mean, it's right. one thing to have a house fire or an interior fire, but, I mean, this thing was like, it was almost like a bomb went off. I mean, these cars are melted. Uh, it's just not what you expect to see when we had inundating rain overnight. I mean, he said this fire, the chief said this fire was crazy when he pulled up to it. Mm. He says, if you think it's something now, he said you should have seen it a couple hours ago. Yeah, so uh, I'm not sure what exactly, but I did see some down power lines across the street. But there's no risk to us because the power's out in this entire area. Uh, this whole block, everything around us, there's no power at all. So that could have been it. Maybe it was a transformer exploded right here, or it dropped a power line, house goes up, cars go up, just a huge mess. Right. We really don't know at this point, and the chief doesn't know either. We've been talking about storm surges all morning. What, what exactly causes a storm surge, Mitchell? Well, storm surges could be 12, uh, 13 feet tall, and as the, the waves that are whipped around at 130 miles an hour hit landfall, sometimes they get bunched up as they go toward land, and that's why you get these huge monster waves hitting the coast, coming in at 130 miles an hour.